served in Arizona for about 16 years. Yeah, my name is Craig Matson. I'm uh, an assistant dean here at Newbold College in England in the boys' dormitory. Uh, I have a family. My mother and father are in Seattle, Washington, along with my little brother and a wonderful girlfriend I've been dating for five months. And in my spare time, I really like to do some reading. I like to hang out with friends a lot. And uh, I really have uh, a passion for fly fishing, actually. Uh, Jesus' second coming. Um, it's really always a topic that I've been fascinated by. I remember when I was a kid, it just seemed like um, this utopian fantasy that was too good to be true. And, uh, you know, now that I'm older and I'm starting to uh, have a faith, um, I really just want to discover more and try and solidify the faith I, I'm trying to have. What do you want for yeah. so uh, Oh, definitely. Yeah, my name is David Billet. I'm uh, a family man. I'm 46 years old. Um, I have uh, a wonderful wife, Pamela, and um, three children. My my son and my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter, who's uh, five. Um, uh, I spend a lot of time running a small business. It's a, we're a healthcare provider, and um, uh, I've been involved with that for the last two years or so. Apart from that, I spend a lot of time trying to renovate this house that uh, we've been in for the last five years or so, and we just want to get it get it right. So um, a lot of DIY and um, that takes up a, a fair amount of my time. Uh, second coming of Jesus, well uh, that's I think is a very interesting subject uh, but I think a lot of people don't necessarily appreciate what that really means as, uh, and as I as a just an ordinary person look around I see that something spectacular is going to happen. Um, I, you know it's just it just seems to be on the cards and it's something which i think that if it's going to happen people need to know a lot more about so i'm very keen to be part of uh, something that's going to present that in a very positive light you are a part of something called mind the gap where we're taking a look at life's big gaps we're t using as a metaphor the journey of the english tube system on the platform three words mind the gap I don't have to keep telling you guys this. Don't you know that that's what happens when you get onto a, 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 a you don't want me to say subway, as you get onto the underground? Isn't there even a voice yeah. that comes yeah. out? The Mind the gap. Mm. Mind the gap. Reality is, however, that life is that way. There are gaps in life. To introduce our gap, let me tell you a story, okay? Millionaire. You can identify with that, can't you? Oh, oh yeah. Millionaire businessman. <laughs> Worked hard, worked his way up through the system. He's holding the portfolios. 14-year-old little girl, and I have a little girl who's 18, going on 25, so I don't have a hard time uh, imagining this. Anyway, tragic story. You hear it in the news all the time. She's kidnapped. Somebody knows the man is wealthy. He goes, this unknown assailant goes for the, uh, the little girl. And sure enough, the, the, the millionaire papa frantic and beside himself and hours later here comes the phone call and you guessed it it's a request for ransom 20 million pounds we, we need it delivered at such and such an address at such and such a time and we've all read the news accounts similar mm -hmm. he, he asked for enough time to liquidate some portfolios scrounges up the cash delivers the 20 million pounds on time at the precise site and walks away. I have paid the ransom. And you know what, according to the story, he never picked his daughter up because he made the ransom. Mm -hmm. He said, wait a minute, there is something absurd about a story like that. And you're absolutely right, that's the whole point of the story. Of course it never happened. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine, a, hey, come on, Lee. <laughs> Can you imagine a millionaire dad even not a millionaire dad, but 20 million mm. pounds for ransom. And wouldn't you be there well, to just... get the precious life that you have paid the price to return? Mm. Having told that fable, I want to put two uh, pieces of evidence on our imaginary table. Okay, these both lines are straight out of ancient scripture. But I want us, and I want those of you who are uh, looking in over our shoulders, I want you to kind of contemplate this because they, they expose the gap that we're going to ponder today. Uh, let, let's put the first piece out. David, do you have it, please, from the New Testament? Page in the New Testament belonging to a little book called 1 Timothy. This would be chapter 2. Let me read a couple lines, uh, please. Verses 5 and 6, David. 5 and 6. For there is one God 
and one mediator between God and men, mm -hmm. the man Christ Jesus. Okay, so it's talking about Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there, he is the mediator between God and the human race. All right. That's right. Who gave himself as a ransom for all men. Ah. Who gave himself as a what? A ransom. Gave himself as a ransom. We had a conversation not long ago about Mel Gibson, the passion of the Christ, the meaning of, mm -hmm. the, meaning of the cross. Mm -hmm. That's what that's talking about. Oh, so the cross is a ransom. It's a payment that the God of the universe, according to the book, all right, you might be saying, look, I'm not even sure there is a God in this universe. And if you're just joining this journey called Mind the Gap, be sure you get some conversations that we've already had because we wrestled with the issue of a God mm -hmm. in the universe and the question of faith. But the book is saying the cross is about this God making a ransom payment for the human race. Okay, so that's that line. Thank you, David. Lonnie, let's put one more line out on the table, then we'll have a man on the street uh, polling, and uh, we'll f move into the free-for-all. What do you got, Lonnie? John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Thank you, Lonnie. Right there at the ending. And by the way, those words were spoken according to that, uh, that narrative and that record less than 24 hours before the Passion of the Christ, before Calvary mm -hmm. actually came. Mm -hmm. So on the eve of his execution, this Jesus of Nazareth says, I am coming back. I'm going to leave for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm going to my father's house. I will come back. When I come back, I'm coming for you. Okay, so we have the ransom, payment made at Calvary, and then the promise, I'm coming back to, I'm not leaving my little girl here. I'm coming back for you. I want to come back for all of you. Two pieces out on the table. And by the way, help me out on this. There are world religions, but as far as I've been able to ascertain, now correct me if I'm wrong, this religion that speaks of a God coming to earth, becoming human, paying a ransom and dying for the human race, leaving and then returning to earth. I don't believe, outside of the religion from that book, I don't think there's another world religion that teaches that. Mm. It is unique. It's unique, this teaching of Christianity. Very unique. Okay, but that's where the gap is because everybody's heard about this, but the second coming of Jesus, Lee, what's, what's heard on the street? What are you hearing? All right, let's see what we got. What, um, what are people saying? Okay, we had... Uh, He's coming back. Why? Didn't he get beaten up enough the last time he was here? It was, was one of the things we had. Um, you've been watching too many sci-fi movies was another thing we had. Okay. Um, somebody said, what, what does he need to do that for? Why, why doesn't he just beam everybody up? I guess that's the sci-fi connection. Stick again. with Star Trek. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or, or just, yeah. just say a few mm. magic words mm. and wave his god wand or something and put everything right. Why don't just get rid of the nasty people, get rid of the bad things in the world and just let us, mm -hmm. the rest of us, right. Right, get on with life. So right. there was that, um, oh, this whole mystery thing, the, the when, you know, who, who knows when or if it's going to happen? You know, who can prove that? So okay. nobody knows and um, Fair enough. if he had some sort of definite time scale, if we had something to work to, then we could all put it in our diaries and we, you know, then we'd know it was going to happen. Mark the so, calendar. Okay. Um, <laughs> then, then this whole thing, I mean, you know, just the whole, the world's going to end, the world's going to end. So many scenarios about how the world might end. So there was, there was this feeling, you know, that we heard, well, if he doesn't hurry up and sort out what he's going to do, then, then we're all going to have to rely on, you know, maybe Bruce Willis to save us from a meteorite or Pierce Brosnan <laughs> oh, to save us news. from nuclear attack or something <laughs> like that. So <laughs> we're in trouble. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's yeah, rely on Bruce Willis. Yeah, yeah, let's go get our boys back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, <laughs> if you can't, if you can't prove it to me, why should I believe it? I mean, that's okay. that's a fair comment that that we had. Fair enough. Fair and enough. Um, and f just to wrap it up, okay, you say he's coming again. So what? Mm. Yeah, what, what's, what difference does that make to me now? Okay. Nah, that's what we have. Well, we may not get time to uh, deal with every single one of those challenges, but they're, they're, they're thought-filled and uh, thought-provoking. Let, let's have at it. Let me, let me, let me go to the, uh, I don't know what number it was there, uh, Lee, but how far-fetched is this scenario of 
the human race or the planet coming to an end? Is that some kind of local uh, fringe notion? What are, you, what, are, what are you hearing? You've just got to look at, look at how many uh, films there are around. Yeah. You know, like I was saying, you know, and we mentioned Bruce Willis. I mean, you've got volcanoes. What were we were talking about earlier? Tsunami. 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 Yeah, mass, <laughs> massive tidal waves, meteorites. You know, mm. uh, nuclear uh, threats. Nuclear threats. Yeah. Disease. But, but is this just Hollywood's uh, kind of trying to make yeah, a few extra bucks? But that's going to be an outworking of common thought, though, okay. isn't it? Really, because they're going to be latching on to things yeah. that it's like, you know, what can we make the money out of? And it's mm. like, well, you know, it was the Cold War and that was working when that was in people's yeah, heads. Day after. And, you know, we're going to yeah. see more and more films about terrorism, sadly, but, you know, that's mm. that's just what, what you're going to get. Interestingly enough, uh, two nights ago in the little uh, flat that I'm staying in here, I'm watching BBC and a documentary comes on. Y you know what the, uh, the hypothesis is? The world is going to end. In fact, the narrator about three quarters of the way through said, look, it could end tomorrow. It could end next week. It could end in 100 years. It could end in 10,000 years. But we are sitting, and they were talking about this molten, mm. <laughs> th th this hot time bomb. inner core. Yeah, we're <laughs> just sitting on a time bomb, and it could come tomorrow. Yep. So, you know, BBC is not exactly known as some sort of religious front for uh, uh, English society. Scaremongering. Yeah. But I just think the world in general is kind of preoccupied with that kind of really? thought process mm. anyway. You know, if you, the sort of medical mm. world, there's all sorts of super bugs out there all the time. Is it going to mm. wipe out the world? Mm. Mm. Because, Sars you know, is. with, yeah, all yeah, kinds Sars, of different yeah. things yeah. like that. And uh, and just, just in general, you hear people, you yeah. know, sort of talking about the end. Probably, I don't know if it's because there isn't no focus in their own lives or, yeah. you know, even uh, we were discussing it earlier, just the um, the ozone layer and the differences yeah, in the global warming, warming and so on. Yeah. So look, it, it's not far-fetched. Faith, no faith, the world's going to end. Both sides of that equation seem to be making the same conclusion. Here's my question. If you've got an almighty God, which you purport to have, and I'm taking the uh, skeptic's point of view, you have an almighty God? Why is he waiting? I mean, wh when did he speak these words that you read a moment ago? 2,000 years ago. Okay, yeah. couple, couple millennia mm. ago. Hey, hello, hello. <laughs> is your, stop, yeah. uh, your, your, your clock off? Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah, However, so why wait? However, he is the father of the whole world. People that were alive then yes. and the people who are to come now. Now, if you're thinking, thinking about him as being the father of us all, do you think for one moment that a, a parent is going to leave a single child behind if they're going to come mm. and take, which is what we believe, take, take us away? He wants to make sure that everyone that is, everyone that can possibly be ready is ready. So that if 10 kids were, rans if 10 kids were kidnapped yeah. and, and the, the wealthy parent pays the price for all 10, is he going to be, hey, look, I got, I, got, I got five out of them, 50% of my kids, I can go home. Doesn't want to leave anyone behind. Okay. Doesn't want to mm. leave anyone behind. I wouldn't want to leave one of my children behind. And, the, and then the waiting is only over the span of one life. Because one, once you're dead... You're dead, so I you're not you. waiting and waiting and waiting. So if yeah. I was born, you so know, one person I isn't one, waiting and waiting. And that's waiting. right. If I was They're born 1,500 years ago, I died, you know, 1,430 years ago or whatever it was. Right. So I'm not still waiting. So it's only ever X amount of time, yeah. you know, whatever that's is. So what's God waiting for? You got a God. He's waiting. You've made a case to, for me. I don't want to lose any of my children if I can help it. Is he going to lose some children? I suppose. Yeah. Well, if there's choice, some will choose yes. Yeah. Some choose no. And so it's like, as many people as can who choose yes, waiting for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Althea, you're starting to say? Yeah. I, <laughs> no, it was just kind of an agreement because we do have choice. Uh, he has paid the price and ultimately if um, he's holding out that, that, that gift to mm. us, then it, it, he's not actually forcing us to take it. So there is this element of choice here okay. uh, as, as well. Uh, so that's why he's waiting. It, it, what he's waiting for is... It, for us to choose, yes. Kids to choose, yeah. children to choose. Yeah, for us to examine all the options that there are and, yeah. and come to what he believes will be the right conclusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking at another question, uh, Lee, that you read off a moment ago. I haven't seen anybody delivered by this God. You read that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody, so uh, what, you, is this pie in the sky? 
No, I mean, I don't think it's pie in the sky. I mean, you... <sighs> How do you say that, you know, whether whether somebody's been delivered or not? People have died. Mm. How do you know whether they're delivered or not? Just because, you know, they died, yeah. you know, you can't then judge them. I'm not in a position to judge, right. you know, who has been mm. delivered and who hasn't. So it's not really pie in the sky in that context. But if you're if you're waiting to see people drifting up off the bus, mm. you know, uh, around <laughs> you. Because there, there, there are scenarios like that out there, aren't there? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you guys have heard about it over here, but we got this huge, they're selling by the millions and millions, and only wacky Americans, of course, would buy them, but it's this, <laughs> it's this, it's this Left Behind series no, of books. No, no, that's not the case. Oh, oh thank you, Lee. You're so kind. <laughs> You're so thoughtful. <laughs> it's this Left Behind series, and like there, there were 12 oh, yeah. books in the series. The, the 12th one yeah. just came out recently, and it's about a world where people suddenly disappear and planes crash and by the way uh, just since you brought this up Lee uh, I've read the books yeah. just for entertainment value essentially but in terms of uh, looking at that ancient document that you've got somewhere on your couch I can't find anything about uh, snatching away and an earth going on mm -hmm. and this 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 secret appearing of Christ. I can't find anywhere where, in fact, it's corroborated. Mm. Everything I read says it's going to be like the BBC scientist yeah, was saying a couple of nights ago. It's going to boom. Shoo, the whole world will know this is it. Curtains. Yeah. However it comes, the whole world's going to yeah, know. Everyone. Yeah. But let me ask you this. If this is pie in the sky, because we got into that a moment ago, if this is pie in the sky, would you still believe it? Nice little, nice little thought, nice little theory. It really isn't true. Would you still believe it? No. I mean, well, in, all, in all honesty. Well, then that, that leaves you in that it's like, if, if, you, if you were to accept and say, OK, it's not really true, but I'm going to believe it anyway, you know, then you're, you're not really looking forward to... There's no hope there. There's nothing, yeah. there's, there's nothing useful at the end of it. It's just following a crowd for no real reward, no reason. You know, once in a while, once, once in a while I hear people say, the problem with you that believe, you, have, you that have faith in this Jesus of Nazareth, it's just kind of group think. You guys are just, everybody has to think this way and, and uh, kind of march in step. But I, I am reminded, probably the greatest Christian who ever lived, and I think most scholars and historians would suggest so, St. Paul, Paul, you've heard of Paul. <laughs> little uh, book he called, uh, we call 1 Corinthians. He says there in chapter 15, if there's no such thing as a resurrection, which essentially would mean no second coming, yeah. just if there's nothing true about the resurrection, we would be the dumbest people on earth mm. to be pursuing this mm. myth. Mm. Because what do you get out of it? I think I would go for the, I would go for you only go through life once, grab for all the gusto you can mentality. Well, exactly, because I think if you, are, if, you're, if you believe that Jesus is going to come again yeah. and you believe all the things, all the sort of the, the guidelines that he's given you to prepare yourself for his coming, mm. living this sort of, that sort of a lifestyle that is going mm. to be conducive mm. to you enjoying heaven, mm. uh, then, you know, sometimes... Part of that road is not necessarily easy, and lots of us have gone through so much heartache and misery, and we've had ups and downs in our lives, and and but yet you still kind of continue on that road mm. because you know that eventually you are going to uh, sort of hit the prize, if you like, and mm. Jesus is going to come again, and mm. you know our mm. lives will will be better. Mm. If there wasn't anything, what would be the point of? Mm you know, doing this. That's my point. It, it, it does know? give you a sense of, of hope that, yeah. you know, because like you were saying, everybody suffers to such an extent in, in life. I mean, there's no one that, you know, goes through life without experiencing that, you know, the pain of being human. Mm. And, you know, the fact that you know that maybe this life isn't everything, that one day, you know, it's going to be made up to us, the things that we've suffered for. You know, we're going to be compensated for mm. want of a better word you know the better. the bible talks about our reward you yeah. know uh, that the fact that we've endured you know 
the six million Jews that got tortured in the Holocaust, you know, one day justice is going to come and they are going to be compensated for all, everything that they suffered, mm. you know. And I think mm. that that's, that's a very important concept to do with the yeah. second coming, that, that, you know, justice is a reality in our world. It's not just... Because so often there's injustice that we see around us. Mm. You know, the bad people get away with it, you know, mm. but God not says, no, one day, win. you know... There is such a thing as judgment. There is such a thing as, as a final. And, and our postmodern mm. society is very, very much, all of us as postmoderns are very uh, keen mm -hmm. on justice being served. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, the mm -hmm. national press, whew, that's all the media watchdogs are doing, watching for every little miscarriage of justice and then oh, yeah. zooming in on. Yeah. Why? It's because as human beings in this 21st century, we're saying justice must be served. Yeah. Uh, and there are a lot of people living with that injustice. Still, sad yeah. to say. You know, we, we've been uh, doing this hypothesis, end of the world, end of the world, and the world deals with those scenarios. Let me just also put on the table, while we have a moment here, let me put on the table the picture of this ancient book as to how the world will end, what it looks like in the book. Okay, yeah. no, no sci-fi now, no Hollywood, let's just go to the book. You, you, have, uh, you have the Bible nearby. Pull your Bible out. Take a look at uh, the Gospel of Matthew. This would be the first Gospel in the New Testament. Matthew. Take a look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. Because we've got to get beyond this, this, this Hollywood visualization. How does the book itself... And by the way, uh, these are the actual words of Christ as they're recorded in the New Testament. So I want you to read how, how Jesus himself described the second coming. You've got Matthew 24. This whole chapter deals with the second coming. Would you mind dropping down to, to uh, verse 30? At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. Okay, now, Althea, so this is the moment Christ is returning to earth. According to Scripture, this is yes. the moment when he returns. This, there's a sign in the sky. Something appears in the heavens, all right? Yes. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, of the sky with power and great glory. He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds, one from, from one end of the heavens to the other. Okay, so you have, you, you, you have this kind of visualization. Going there, on there's the this sky, massive yes. cloud. You know, I imagine like a fireball or something. There's this cloud. Yeah. It's big. And it's big mm. and it's coming. And uh, does it, is this one where uh, where well, there's a trumpet, trumpet call. call? Yeah, what's up with this trumpet call? You can imagine yeah. people like when you see these people and there's a tornado coming and everybody's, honey, <laughs> get the video camera, there's something coming. You can imagine this like, Whoa, now, now listen, you guys laugh, but we, where, where I'm from, back in the Midwest of, mm, uh, of really the U.S., mm -hmm. yeah, we get tornadoes. And yeah. in fact, uh, we yeah. have tornado horns mounted up on uh, telephone poles. So that, in the event, yeah, so that in the event of an approaching tornado, these, these loud wow. sirens go off, just this whooping yeah. siren. I tell you, you hear it, man, and you head for shelter. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this is a warning. This is trouble coming. So Matthew describes this moment. You've got this sign, this, apparently Christ himself sitting on this cloud of fire, mm -hmm. and there's this, this tornado siren or a trumpet or something is going yeah, off. Really Apparently, it's not the kind of event that you'd sleep through, wake up the next morning and say, man, I heard, did you hear that Jesus <laughs> came last night? Yeah. Guys, I missed it. I'm sorry. I, I need to be awake next time that happens. <laughs> this is a massive event. Well, clearly, that's the, the trumpet is significant yeah. in that it's saying, you know, if you're sleeping, wake you up, wake, wake up, up, wake up, wake up, wake yeah. up. Yeah. In fact, let me give you another trumpet text. Go, go a little further in the uh, New Testament. Go to 1 Thessalonians. Go to 1 Thessalonians. Ah, who would ever name something they wrote Thessalonians? I mean, <laughs> Lee, you are a writer. Would you call something Thessalonians? Play, if I live there, and I like living there. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's the name of a city, isn't it? Thessalonica. So the people, <laughs> this, is a, this is a letter written to the people living in, Thess in Thessalonica. Thessalonica. Boy, have you found it faster than me. 1 Thessalonians, <laughs> go to chapter 4. Okay, let's have a woman's voice read this. One of you women, please read this. 1 Thessalonians 4. Pick it up in verse, it's describing the second coming now, verse 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Keep reading. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and so we will be forever with the Lord. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, get the picture. So we have this massive cloud of fire, the siren, trumpet, mm -hmm. the trumpet's going off. You see the trumpet here as well. Mm -hmm. And when that trumpet blasts, whatever that sound is gonna be like, we got, we got mm -hmm. uh, this is like a laser light show. Yes. When that blast goes off, get this, every cemetery on earth, you know, I picture it kind of like Hollywood, you know, the, the <laughs> rumble and suddenly, <laughs> So and the, the ground oh, and the really? ground is opening up and according to this now I, listen don't laugh at me those of you watching right now <laughs> hollywood has done this trick to us so many times we're used to just dismissing it as ah it's just a bunch of of uh, what do we call it special <laughs> effects no it's describing the ground shaking and mm -hmm. people who've been dead for how long Lee? thousands could be thousands could be a day could be thousands but they come up restored mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they come out of the earth. Do you know, that reminds mm. me of we, what we talked about before, when Jesus died yeah. and, and rose. Yes. It kind of has a nice little... You have the resurrection there. of Christ happening again. a yeah. billion All times again. over. So you're, yeah. you're saying restored. You mean people just like, real people like me. Not real dust, bodies. Not, not with bits of weed and, you know, well, like just flesh and bone. Flesh and, and, bone. And, and here's where I get my cue on that. <laughs> Because of Jesus. When Jesus came out of the tomb, yeah, he was holy. you know, Mel Gibson has the resurrection, what is it, 15 seconds worth at the end? Boom. But when Jesus comes out of the tomb, they touch yeah, him. He's touching. And, you know, Mary's out there, this, this former prostitute is out there. He appears to her, yeah, and he real. says, quit holding me. I, he said, you know, she was so so exuberant. Yeah. So he has flesh and bones. Yeah. He's not this little. Mm. Yeah, not a will of the wisp. Because isn't isn't it an old English word for spirit? Ghost. Didn't yeah. it come from England? Yeah. 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 Holy ghost. Yeah. The ghost. Yeah. No, it's not a ghost. This is a re this is a real live body. Mm. So the, the this the body's coming to life. I, I want to put that on the table because you need to realize that when we're dealing with the end of the earth, mm. we're not dealing with some little special effects studio that has conjured up a Wizard of Oz behind the curtain going, <laughs> I am the wizard. <laughs> this is the God of the universe yeah. who paid the ransom guys mm. and who said, I told you I was coming back. Mm. He's coming back. Ah, let me give you one more text and then I want to get, I want to get you to tell me about what this means to you. One more text. Uh, First Corinthians. That's still New Testament. You say, do I, why is everything in the New Testament? Well, I'm telling you, I'm going to the New Testament right now because in the New Testament is the actual expressions of Christ where he's making the promise and then his followers are re-articulating that promise. So let's take a look at, at uh, one more. This is 1 Corinthians 15. I'm just going to have to find this on the spot here. Ah, let's go to uh, verse 51. Now, this is a longer chapter. You've got uh, 51 verses in this one. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Let's have a good English voice, Lee. How about it? But let me tell you a wonderful secret God has revealed to us. Not all of us will die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blinking of an eye, when the last trumpet is there blown. Goes that siren again. When the trumpet sounds, the Christians <laughs> who have died will be raised with transformed bodies, and then we who are living will be transformed that we will never die. Guys, wow, wow. wow that says yeah, in, a, cool. good, yeah, in, in a split second though, in the twinkling of an eye, I like that old English uh, yeah. expression, in the twinkling of an eye, mm. just the batting of an eyelid, even those who are alive, who have been living for the return of their, their uh, God, mm. there, there's instant transformation. That means, you know, I caught these fingers in a, in a, as a kid growing up in Japan, caught them in an electric buzz saw that the carpenters left outside the house. So they, I got these awful scars, no big deal. But everything about us that's defective now, does it stay defective for the rest of eternity? Mm -hmm. According no to the document. Mm -hmm. According to the document, what happens? Completely Althea, you're a nurse, what happens? Completely transformed. Complete transformation. Your... Mm. Complete metamorphosis. See, that, that, that's, a, that's a really exciting but fascinating concept for, for us all to, to uh, understand because all we know is Mortality. Yeah, that's all we live with. We the know, end. Yeah. The end. We see something. We can see damage, decay, yeah. and uh, you know, people with their arms and legs blown off by landmines and all sorts of things, and and, and then death. Mm -hmm. So this, the second coming, is is something that we have no idea or supernatural any. transformation. Absolutely, yeah. this is a, Hollywood does it all the time. Mm -hmm. And we say, well, you know, it could be. But the moment you say, oh, there's a God who's going to do this. Oh, well, I mean, please, you can't. Science can't do that. Uh, guys, I want to get it more personal. We've got the evidence out now. There's going to be a, ra a ransom has been paid. 
Yep. And the one who paid the ransom, more than 20 million, I'm understanding that this is a fairly pricey ransom for the whole human race. Mm -hmm. He gave his life. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to come back. You read that moment ago, Lonnie. I'm going to come back. I'm going to take you away from this hell hole for a while, back to my father's house. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? David, what does that mean to you? As a human being, mm -hmm. believing that he is coming back mm -hmm. for you, well, what difference does that make in your life right now? Right now? Yeah. Well, one thing that I have done is accept that this life is as good as it gets. Okay. It doesn't get any better. All right. Um, and as I look around me, at one time I used to see a crime scene tape on a movie. Mm -hmm. That would be the only place I see it. But I've seen it in my local high street. Mm. You live in downtown I London? Uh, yeah, in, in a place mm. called Croydon. Rough area. Croydon. Yeah, Croydon, yeah. yeah. And, uh... <laughs> well, I hope it's not that rough if you live there. <laughs> so since you moved in, it got rough, hasn't it? So you see gutsy real life every day. Well, yeah, and you, you see it in the high street, and you realise that somebody is, has just lost their life, and uh, through mm. some uh, ridiculous incident. Gun, yeah. gun crime is, is, mm. is rife. Mm. And we're not just talking about in isolated parts mm. of London. Right. We're talking about all yeah. over, mm. over London. Mm. Something that was uh, mm, something associated mm. with the United States at one stage, mm. but it's, it's now, now here. Mm. Um, you know, car crashes, um, friends, people. As I get older, more and more people. I'm attending more and more funerals, mm, um, mm. losing um, loved ones and people mm. who are close to me. So for me, um, the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back means mm. that we're going to put an end to all of this. Mm. And we're not talking about uh, coming back to take me off into a, a land where we'll be just living like saints with halos playing and, and playing harps. We're, we're talking about, the Bible tells me that we'll be doing real things. We'll mm. be building homes. No longer will we mm. be sort of building for someone else to live in. Uh, and, and there'll be no more death. There'll be no more pain, no more, no more sorrow. So that hope means that, something that, that, to you now. Means, yes. It gets you through life now? A ab absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Lonnie, what does this, the second coming of Christ mean to you? Um, two things. Mm. Um, one, it, it, it means justice to me. Mm. You know, the fact that all these people who have suffered, um, who've had a terrible life, I mean, I think about, you know, six million Holocaust victims, you know, all who suffered way beyond what is normal or, or, or what they deserve. You know, the second coming s s talks about justice and talks about, you know, a judgment and, and things are going to be put right. Um, and then on, on a personal note, um, my best friend died five years ago when mm. we were at university. Mm -hmm. um, she was involved in an accident and um, she was on a life support machine and they made the decision to switch it off. She was just 22, she had a whole life ahead of her, mm. intelligent girl. Um, and, you know, when you kind of have things like that happen to you, mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no easy answer to the question why. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like she was a wicked person and deserved to die. It's not like she was 93 and had had a good life and you could say, oh, well, never mind. You know, she, she had her whole life ahead of her. You know, she, she was in love. You know, she, she was doing well in her studies. You know, and you just look at that situation and say, you know, there's something not fair about that. And not only that it's not fair, but, you know, I miss her, you know, mm -hmm. it's not fair for me either, you know, I want to see her again, I have good days and I want to share things with her and she's not there to share with mm. and, you know, I, I experience something and I want to call her up and mm. I can't and, you know, and the second coming says to me, like we just read about it, it in, the, in the Bible, you know, that there's going to be a resurrection, there's going to be mm. those people who have died are going to come back to life again mm. and yeah. I'm going to see her again mm -hmm. and that you know that says that that hope to me of you know it's not the end death is it has been conquered by mm. god and you know maybe one day i am going to get the opportunity to sit down and catch up with her all these years mm. that we've missed i can show my pictures of all the new things that have happened you know or whatever you know and, and i'm going to be able to yeah. reco reconnect all those missing years and and i Thanks, can't Lauren. wait you know to to get to heaven and, mm. and kind of catch up with her because mm. you know because so the second coming means it means a reunion to exactly. the, the restoration exactly. yeah. of a relationship exactly. and althea you're yeah. sitting there kind of dabbing <laughs> your eyes and i'm trying to read between the lines it. here <laughs> What's happening? Well, you know, I'm happy. I'm actually very happy. Mm. <laughs> for, for two reasons. One is that um, I lost my sister about 24 years ago. Mm. And, you know, she was just one of the nicest people I ever knew. And you know, just talking about it and hearing everybody talk about, um, you know, what it means and how exciting it's going to be. It just gives me the hope that mm. I am going to, to meet her again. Yeah. Because 
I didn't actually want her life to be cut short mm -hmm. so that I wouldn't I would grow up without her and that's actually what happened you know my, my other sister and I had to grow up without her mm. and we, we miss her mm. Mm. and so for me that is um, Jesus coming again and giving us all another mm. opportunity to mm. share our lives mm. is just a fantastic opportunity that I personally don't want to miss out on mm -hmm. and 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 the other aspect is that you know for many years I've I've worked in hospitals and I've worked in intensive care units so I uh, look after very sick and dying people mm -hmm. I've had to switch people off machines before now many times mm -hmm. and to look at the effect that that has I mean and I know mm. I mean I'm crying with the with the family because mm, I, sure. I know what they feel like mm. yeah. and you know once you've had someone die you you can't help it really I know it sounds uh, perhaps just a little bit um, trite but it isn't mm. you're actually feeling it all over again you're mm. feeling it with them mm. and I and I quite often have to tell them you know this is not the end Mm. Now that I've got my own, the, the, the faith and the hope for myself, I've got to tell somebody else because that is the reality for me because mm -hmm. otherwise what else is there? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thank you all for, mm. for, for sharing from your heart. David, this, the second coming of Jesus means a, 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 a deliverance from a society that is just imploding on itself, socially, morally, mm. economically, mm. ecologically, the whole thing. Lonnie, the reunion, uh, the, the reestablishment of relationships. And Althea, the, the, the rebinding of the family. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's the greatest pain on earth today. Yeah is the loss of our families. Yeah, we live with that. Mm. The, the relationships within the family context mm. that, that means so much to us. Uh, but can you see again, can we be reminded again? And those of you watching right now, you're saying, hey, this is new stuff for me. I've never heard of this before. The world coming to an end. Hey, listen, we've been living with end of the world scenarios now for, for a century. Ever since science has progressed to its state, present state, everybody's looking at end of time scenarios. Mm. So we know the world's gonna end. But out on this little imaginary table now, we have the fact that somebody in this universe has paid a ransom. He paid it, the ultimate ransom, in which he gave himself, he gave his life. Anybody who pays a ransom that expensive is not gonna walk away and say, I paid it, forget about bringing the kids. Mm -hmm. Those kids are mine. Six mm -hmm. billion children are mine. Mm -hmm. You may be one of the six billion. If you're alive, you are one of them. I'm one of them, we're all one of them. Mm -hmm. But the point is, the ransom's been paid. The promise has been made. I'm going to come back for you. There is a hope that can lift us up above the miasma, above the mud and grime and grit of survival. And some of you watching right now are saying, hey, you have no idea, Dwight, what life is like. Let me tell you what my crisis is. And I know that the, crisis, the crises can be compounded over and over and over again. But here's what I want to say to you, friend. You don't have to live with a sense of hopelessness about what it is you're going through now. You need to know that because there was a first coming, according to this book, because there was a first coming, that is a guarantee that there will be a second coming. We haven't been left here on this planet to fend for ourselves. We are not little flotsam on the sea of chance and change and, well, just fend, make it on your own. Somebody says, I have paid the ransom for you and I am coming back for you. You know what you can do? you can invite that someone to step into your life. It's as simple as that. You say, Jesus, if you really do exist, Jesus, I'd like to invite you to step into my life. It is a mess right now. But surely, if you are the almighty one, you can take the jangled shards and broken pieces of my life and you can reshape them into a beautiful mosaic. Jesus, whoever you are, if you're the Savior, come into my life and let me begin all over again. I want to live with your hope. Mm. Guys, it's that simple, is it not? Mm. He says, I have the hope. Yeah. You tell the world about my hope mm. because every man, woman, and child who finds out about the hope has the invitation to accept that hope. I, I hope in these next moments as you contemplate this business of hope, living with hope, I hope you'll make that invitation to this same Jesus and invite him into your life.